Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Living Word Church uh, broadcast. We thank you so much for being here with us today. We declare that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and we're glad in it. If this is your first time joining us, we'd ask that you would, uh, we thank you, first of all, thank you so much for being with us because we just think that it's a encounter the great honor and privilege that you've chosen to hang out with us. And we just believe that God is going to say at least one thing that's going to impact your thinking and impact your, your mind and your thought process to cause you to go to another level and be successful. We believe that uh, we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and the word of God is our mind renewer. Uh, also, uh, if this is your first time, we'd ask that you like and share. And even if it's not your first time, please like and share and uh, send out a notification that others might uh, join in and actually have an opportunity to receive God's word as well. We just believe that God has created a great platform for us and that through this platform, many people have given testimonies and lives have been changed. And we thank you for that so much. And we give God all the glory and the praise. Uh, if this is your first time or if it's not your first time and you want to give or so into the ministry here at Living Word, I thank you so much for uh, just following the website, looking on the Facebook page, and you'll be able to see how you may be able to give uh, online or, or sending in your donations or your tithe. We thank you, and we declare now in Jesus' name that you receive a supernatural uh, harvest from your seed sown. Um, the Bible says in Luke 18, 29 through 30, it says, and he said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, there is no man that has left house or parents or brethren or father, parents or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. Basically what God is saying is there's nothing that you can sacrifice that he won't cause to to multiply in your life. He'll cause it to multiply. You give it to him, he'll cause it to multiply. You walk away from certain things, you might think you're losing, but you're actually gaining. So even as it relates to your giving, when you give, when you sow, you're not losing. You're actually creating the opportunity to gain. And God has created that through his seed time and harvest system and sowing and reaping system. So for you, just be on, be on the lookout as you sow and as you give, be on the lookout for your harvest, for your return. And you're not giving to get a return. You're not getting just because you're going to get something back. But it's also a blessing to know that God, you can't beat. That's an old song you should be sung. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. So as it relates to that, we just believe in God for supernatural harvest. But we also thank him for the opportunity to be able to sow and give uh, into kingdom principle in the kingdom agenda and in what God is doing in the earth, and which is a big part of what we'll be talking about today. I also want to uh, give a notification that uh, the giving will be, um, I mean, prayer will continue uh, going forward tomorrow, uh, I guess during the course of the week, and it'll be from 7 to 7.30 a.m., and you can look on the Facebook page to see the a call in number. It'll be listed on the on the Facebook page and you'll be able to dial in. So wherever you are, no matter where you are from seven to seven thirty, if you just want to connect and be a part of prayer, please do. Uh we also want to remind everyone that this week will be uh honoring veterans. Uh I think it'll be Wednesday is Veterans Day. So we want to uh make sure that we honor all of our veterans, all of you who are connected to Living Word. Thank you so much for your service. We just uh, thank you for uh, committing and submitting your lives uh, to the agenda of protecting our country and 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 being uh, a uh, soldier and a servant to protect what God has given us in this great great country uh, of freedom. And and in the same vein of that, I also just want to uh, encourage everyone to pray, continue to pray for our uh, country, continue to pray for this transition in our country. Um, um, let's pray that, uh, it is brought to a conclusive end, that there is clarity as to, uh, every aspect of the conclusion. I, I know the media has gone ahead and, and, and announced the winner, but I believe that I'm not sure, but I don't believe that there's been concession on the side of the president. So let's just agree that it will be conclusive 
that the process works itself out and that it's conclusive and that some people never going to accept it, but there are some who will accept it as it relates to the fact that they see that there was transparency and that there was uh, openness and that everything has gone back or whatever process needs to go forth. I'm not really sure, but whatever the process is that the, the current president sees, whatever the process is, uh, that uh, concessions are made and transition is made smooth. And then we can begin to believe for uh, our country to go uh, to another level or be better or whatever the world system's capabilities are. <laughs> and we know that the world system has some issues. So, um, so at the end of the day, we want this transition to play itself out and whatever needs to take place, we're just going to pray and believe God that it takes place. Um, thank you for all of those who fasted and prayed up until this point. Thank you so much for uh, committing your time to it. We just uh, agree with you now for a supernatural return, and we thank you so, so very much. Well, take your Bibles and raise them up in the air and repeat this after me. Today, I choose to experience life. Life begins with salvation, and life is developed through spiritual growth, and life is shared through us being witnesses of his great love. This is the word of life. And this word of life is living in us. And this word of life is the light of all men. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Where is the church? That's our question. Where is the church, you know? Uh, we got all of this stuff going on and all of this, these things that have been taking place over the course of the last eight to nine months, including the election and its process. And I, I'm not so sure we're not still... Uh, in the same place we were in, even at the beginning of all of this and, and uh, with confusion and whatnot. But I, I think our greatest question is not who has won the election. And that's an important question. But I believe the greatest question is for each of us is where is the body of Christ in all of this? Where is the church in all this? And what is my official duty in the body? You know, last week I talked about the fact that uh, there were three things that we needed to do. Number one, we needed to remember it's the foundation that matters. So as it relates to that in our personal lives, we need to make sure that our, the foundation is solid. Uh, hearing the word, uh, establishing our personal lives on the word and doing the word of God. The second thing was don't allow strife and confusion to pull you out of God. Trust God and walk by faith. Don't allow confusion and uh, chaos and strife to pull you out of God. You know, that's, that's one of the things that, that the enemy uses is he uses strife and confusion. The Bible says where there's strife and confusion, there's every evil work. So he creates confusion and strife purposely so that he can accomplish the things that he wants to accomplish in the midst of the flurry. And, uh, but when your eyes are locked in on God, you, you see right through the smoke and you don't get confused about what it is that we're supposed to be doing, what it is that's going on, who's responsible for it and what our assignment is in the, in the midst of that. That's good. And then that third thing is your walk with God is bigger than the election and all the things that's going on. So your life decide today to live for God. Those are the three points that I made last week. Decide today to live for God. And so, boy, is that ever any more important than it is today with everything that's going on. So in the midst of everything that's going on, especially with the election, and I'll make some references to it, our main focus has got to be to know what our role and assignment is in this season. Where is the church? Now, you got to remember, we talked about, we, I taught on the church several months ago and we 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 decided and actually had clear definition as to what the church is and we talked about the church is not the building we're not talking about where is the building we know what church buildings are well uh and we also talked about the fact that a lot of times when people get together and, and they're having a, a very excited time a very high spirited time they say boy we had church i'm not talking about that kind of church i'm talking about the people i'm talking about the people of god the church is the people and so we need to ask ourselves in this season, where are we? Where are we? 
and I'm going to talk some about that. So whether you're on uh, what appears to be the winning side of this thing, of the election, or whether it appears to be on the losing side, there is a fact we must remember. God is moving and transitioning his church toward his goal of kingdom agenda. We got to remember that God is still doing something. And I know the, uh, the, the winners say, yeah, he's doing something and he's doing it in our victory. Uh, 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 and then he, some folks are, well, yeah, he's doing something and he's doing it in the loss of the, uh, the Republicans and he's doing it in that. Well, he's doing it in everything. God is God and he's moving in a way that is positioning the kingdom of God. It is not about who won and who lost or who's winning, who's losing or who, what, all of that is earthly stuff. But at the end of the day, God is doing something that is positioning the church. And what we need to do is to make sure that we don't get so caught up in the victory or the defeat that we lose sight on the fact that there is something that needs to be going on right now with us that pertains to kingdom agenda and pertains to God. Amen. Amen. So now go to, um, uh, go to, go to Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16 and look at verse nine. We're going to read nine through 20. Mark chapter 16. When you get there, say amen. Notice it says, now when Jesus was risen early uh, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with her or with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. Now you need to, you need to circle that. They believed not. Verse 12 says, after that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue or the remaining folks. Neither believed they them. Underline that. This is the second time we see where folks didn't believe. Believe them. Afterwards, verse 14 he appeared unto eleven as they sat at meat or to eat and upbraided them at, with their what? Unbelief. That's the third time. Unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not. That's the fourth time them which had seen him after he was risen. Verse 15. And he said unto them, listen to what he said. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16, he that, now, now he's going to give a reference to that believing thing. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Notice what it says. And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. Isn't that interesting? All of this, we read all of this and we see that word believe keep popping up over and over again. In him, in my name, shall cast out devils. So it's the believing shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And it, if they drink of any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Watch this. And they went forth. Notice, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now, if you'll notice that word believe popped up several times. Not only did it pop up for those people who were, uh, in the perimeter of this situation. In other words, people around struggle to believe. Even though certain people saw Jesus, people around and struggle to believe. But even deeper, the disciples str struggled to believe and then had hardness of heart, the scripture says. So recognize here that your heart condition is critical in this day. 
and in this time because your heart condition can affect your belief system. So the, even the disciples struggled to believe and had hardness of heart until Jesus showed up himself to them. And then even beyond that, there were others who did not believe. So, so what is our assignment right now? One thing is clear. People are struggling to believe God right now. People are struggling to even believe in Jesus. So our job is to go about ministering and teaching and preaching the word of God to cause those who don't believe to receive Christ. That's what he said. He said, now listen, he that believeth on me is baptized and saved. And he said to him, go ye and preach the gospel to every creature, even especially to those who don't believe. I submit to you today that there are a lot of people in the body of Christ and outside of the body of Christ that are struggling to believe. Notice the disciples didn't believe until they saw him. Remember Thomas? Thomas said, I, you know, I, I saw, I, I don't believe unless I put my hand in, into his side and thrust my hand in my finger into his, his wound in his hand. And, and so Jesus showed up to him and said, here's my hands. Put your head struck, put your hand, put your finger in my, in my wound. Here, thrust your hand into my side. And he said, I believe now I believe. Well, he said, blessed is the man that believed though he hadn't seen. So we are the conduits that will cause those who are in the world to believe that Jesus is who he says he is. We are the, 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 uh, we have the assignment to go and minister the word of God. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, all this, this great stuff that's going on with the new, uh, uh transition of the presidency and all of that, cause all of that stuff is cool. But the reality of where the church should be is the church should be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why I know it's m emotional. And I see people, there are people crying and, and oh, it's just, if my mama could see this and my grandma, all that, I, I get all that. That's great. But nothing is more important than us being the church right now and coming to our place of performing and doing what the church is called to do in these latter days, which is to represent Jesus and minister to those who don't believe. That's who we got to get. We, oh, oh, bless you. I, I'm ticky. I got to be careful because I don't want to. I don't want to get caught up into this. I don't want to get caught up in this this political thing. I don't want to get caught up in it. I, I want to stay above it. I want to stay above it. I want to stay above it. I really want to stay above it. So I purposely didn't watch the news. I purposely didn't watch any uh, uh, announcements. I purposely didn't scan Facebook. I purposely didn't do it because I don't want to preach that. That's not what I'm preaching. I'm preaching what God wants you to hear. He wants you to hear that we must be about our father's business right now because his time is coming near. The return of Jesus is close, y'all. And it's not about this stuff. It's really not, man. I, I'm, it's really not. So I, I'm, I'm trying to stay above it. I really am. Because that's how much I believe that, it's that that is less significant than what God really needs for us to be doing in this season. Somebody say amen. Amen. So now watch this. Uh, verse 18, watch this. They shall take up serpents and they shall drink an, uh, any deadly thing and it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth. Here we go. We are to go forth. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. We got to go. So God can work with us and signs can be produced. I think we, we, we're, we're getting too caught up into the world stuff that we're not going forth and God can't man manifest himself because his, his, his assignment, his job is for uh, to manifest himself now through us. His part was finished. 
but there's a part that we must play in order for God to do the things that he needs to do and transition the things that he needs to transition in the earth. You know, he, he uses our hands. He uses our feet. He uses our voice. He uses our eyes. He uses our hearts to minister, to reach people in the world. So that's the assignment for us. If we don't go, a lot of things can't happen that he needs to happen. And I just want to let you know that it's our season to go out and do what God has called us to do. So number one, we should be in this season reaching the lost. We should be reaching the lost. Oh man, no more talking about reaching the lost. Man, it's some exciting stuff going on in the world. It's 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 it's, it's some some great transition. We done got we done we done got old dude out of office. So we need to be celebrating. We need to march in the streets and celebrate and have parties and blow horns and hug and and kumbaya and and no, we need to be reaching the lost. That's what we need to be doing right now. That uh, The things of the world will take care of itself. But what we need to be doing right now is reaching the lost. Watch this. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. What does it say? Luke 19 and 10. It says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was was lost. Okay, I, I leave that there. Don't change that. You got that? You got this six six twenty two. Praise the Lord. Um. <laughs> I wanted to wait for my transcriber there. Uh, Luke nineteen and ten says, "For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost." <laughs> So Jesus came to save that which was lost. When he left, he said, I, I finished my part, but greater works than these shall ye do uh, than he did. He expects us, y'all, to work on kingdom behalf by going out and winning the lost. Listen, regardless of the circumstances and situations, matter of fact, especially because of the circumstances and situations, he's expecting us to go forth and to minister the word and to preach the gospel. What is that? That means to tell the good news of Jesus Christ, especially to those who don't believe. Amen. John 17 and 12. If you'll notice what it says in John 17, 12, it says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is what? Lost. But the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. That the scriptures might be fulfilled. So now listen, he doesn't intend to lose anybody. Not only does he intend for us to go and win those who are already lost, he intends for us to minister to those and to make sure that nobody's lost. That nobody loses their focus and get caught up and get back out there in the world and and, and, and deny God. Because, you know, some folks, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, who were born again, who received Jesus as Lord, who declared him as Lord of their life, got mixed up with wrong doctrine and then started saying, well, Jesus is not really Lord. He's really not God. And and this other thing is God now. And so that that's, listen, you can, you can, you can undeclare your soul, your salvation and decide you don't want God. That's, that's the decision you can make. So we have people who have made a decision from wrong doctrine that now they're choosing not to choose God or as it relates to Jesus as our savior. That's a whole nother message. I don't have time to go into it. John 18, nine says this, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gaveth me, have I lost none? So now Jesus' focus was not uh, uh, um, was not to lose those who are to come into the body of Christ. We're to win the lost. We're to go out and win those who lost. And as a church, where's the church? In the middle of all of the stuff that's going in? That's a good question. 
because our assignment, not the pastor's assignment, hey, it's not just the preacher's assignment. Yeah, preachers need to be out preaching. No, no, the body of Christ needs to be out preaching. And I don't have time to go into it, but in Ephesians, he said that the, he'd, been, he'd given pastors and teachers and apostles and evangelists for the, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So the work, what is the work of the ministry? Well, that's the kingdom agenda. It is to go out and win the loss. Yeah, it's in different arenas. It's in different professions. It's in different circumstances and situations of life that we all are put into. But even in the midst of those situations that we're put in, we're put in to win the loss. Amen. So reaching the loss is number one. Number two, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the gospel. That's the good news. You don't need a, a theological degree. You, you don't have to have a extensive uh, uh, study uh, to know John 3.16. And the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So our testimony is the uh, is the ingredient that goes along with John 3.16, the truth which causes us to be successful and the Holy Spirit comes in and undergirds that and calls us to win. You know, um, um, John preached one message. His whole ministry was just one message. He didn't have a, he didn't teach series. He didn't teach uh, uh, 50 to 60 different messages. On. He didn't teach on, on one thing and then move over and teach on something else, and then move over and teach on this and move over and teach on that. He taught on the, the day. He taught on the circumstance. He taught on the kingdom agenda, which was to win the loss. And his number one message, his number one agenda was repent. That's all he taught. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. So he didn't have an extensive uh, library of messages. He taught one thing because that was the message of the day. Guess what the message of the day is? Go and minister the word of God. Go reach the lost. So number one, reach the lost. Number two, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. Watch this. Number three, being the city of on the hill, look at Matthew 5, 14. Matthew 5, 14. Being the church, being the city set on a hill. We can be the city. You know, if we're not careful, we blend in to everything that's going on and stop being the difference. We blend in and stop being the difference. It says uh, uh, in Matthew 5 and 14, it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So if we're the light of the world, then there should be something that distinguishes us from everything else that's going on. Watch this. Even in victory, even in defeat, we should still be brighter than what's going on in the area of defeat. We should still be brighter than what's going on even in the area of, of victory. So watch this. So even when there are circumstances that go on that everybody is celebrating, we should still be talking about Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. We should still be talking about the goodness of God. And we should still be talking about the kingdom of agenda. That is, it's bigger than the victory. The, the, the kingdom of agenda is bigger than the world's victory. I, I don't know what you're talking about. It, it's all in the same. It is that. No, well, no. If you talk about it, it is. But if you're talking about who got beat up and, and, and shoot you a couple of videos and a couple of, uh, uh, a couple of uh, 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 Facebook posts and, and put, put the, the current president's face on, uh, 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 on the, the, the football player that played for Seattle and, and, and put, put Biden's face on the, on the player that played for Seattle and put Trump's face on the face of the kid that made the pick six and he was running down the sideline and he came from way back way back and came and they tackled him. They put Trump's face on one and, and, <laughs> and, and, and Biden's face on the other. Um, that's not the gospel. 
or if you posting every few minutes about what's not right and what happened and somebody did, that's not the gospel. What's that got to do with Jesus? Or if you're out celebrating and telling everybody, it's finally done. We finally got rid of this crook and now we can move forward. That's not the gospel. And we got church folk doing that. We got church folk doing that. Is that the gospel? He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Is that the gospel? Hmm. Praise the Lord. I'm just telling you, that's not what time this is. I know it's emotional. I know it's exciting. You know, <laughs> you know one of the toughest things for folks to get over is gossip. Like an old refrigerator, you can't keep nothing. It's tough to not get in the gossip game, to get in the strife game. Oh, I want to say something. Listen, I can't tell you how many times I saw folks post stuff and I said, oh, I want to say something. <laughs> I want to say something so bad. Because it would, it, would it would be so ignorant and it would be so not God. And it would be from church folk. And I'll be wanting, I want to say something. Oh, I want to say something. But I, I wouldn't. And then my wife would help me. She said, no, don't say nothing. Don't, don't say nothing. <laughs> because all I would do is just get in it. And there's no, there, there would be no winning. There's no winning in going back and forth and all of that. But there is something that I can interject that can win. This right here. See, I get on there and put this on there. You got to step back. But that wasn't a place for that even. Here is the place for it. We at church now. This is where we need to talk about it, living word. We don't need to try to go out and prove how crooked one person was or how good somebody is or so bad. And the Bible said no man is good but God. So our job is to focus in on what the assignment of the day is, what God's assignment in for us, and for what we should be doing. Um, um uh, the church must be about God's business and not the business of the world. Our job as a church is not to be about the world's business. Now, there are people who are put in positions that are put in positions to edify and to uh, highlight God. In those cases, yes. But our job is to not to get into the muck and the mire to try to figure out all this stuff to to, to be in strife, to be in gossip, to be in backbiting, to be in uh, slander and all that kind of stuff. God doesn't work through that. So our job is to be about what God gives us as an instruction to be about, which is his business. And let the rest of that stuff take care of itself. Watch this. Jesus says in Luke 2, 49 through 52, Luke 2, 49 through 52, it says, And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Was ye not that, or know ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood his parents, this is Jesus talking, and his parents said, and they understood not the sayings which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings to herself uh, in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. I am telling you that not everybody's going to understand why you're not getting in the mess and you preaching and talking about God. Not everybody's going to understand when you say, listen, I, all that's good, but listen, let's talk about what God's, what my business is and what our role in our business is right now. Just like his parents, Jesus' parents didn't, they said here, uh, they understood not the sayings which he spake when he said, I got to be about my father's business. Guess what? It's going to be some folks that don't understand why you're not getting in it. Wow, I, I know, yeah, Jesus, yeah, we're going to win. you got to go preach the gospel, but that ain't what time it is right now. Yes, it is. That's exactly what time it is. In the name of Jesus, it's time for the church to be about our father's business and not get caught up in the emotionalism uh, and the confusion and the strife because where strife and confusion is, there's also every evil work. 
So our job is to not get caught up in anything, but being about what God has called us to do and being about what God is calling us to be. Amen. So if we're not careful, we can get caught up in the cares of this world and its agenda. We are to celebrate and be joyful for those who celebrate and also mourn with those who mourn. But in the end, we should not settle for just what the world is doing. Glory to God. It's bigger than the world, y'all. You know, we are, we're in the latter days, and this is bigger than what the world is doing. We must stay focused. We must stay focused. Remember in Mark 4, 19, it says this, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in, watch what that happens, chokes the word and it's become unfruitful. So remember now, as it relates to all of the stuff that's going on, you got to be careful that you don't get so caught up in the cares of the world that you lose focus. And what does the loss of focus do? It chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful. There is none of us that can afford for the word to become unfruitful in our lives. Hear, hear me, precious people. Hear me. Listen, this is the season more than any time that we must lock in to the presence of God and lock in to our assignment and be about our father's business and doing what it is we're called to do. Yeah. Celebrate. Yeah. Wow. That's wonderful. But let's go on to another level. Let's, let's check out the things that are bigger than this. Well, there's something bigger than this. Yes, sir. I know having the first female black female to be in a position of a, a vice president and the status of vice president is a big thing. And it's historical, all of that, but still God's stuff is bigger than that. It's still bigger than that. We can't put all of our stock in that. That's, that's one of the problems. We put all of our stock in that and, and position and status. And, and yeah, it's a, it's a great thing and it should be uh, celebrated. But at the same time, y'all kingdom is bigger. Now see when that cloud crack and Jesus come through them clouds, you're not going to be thinking about who the, who the vice president is. <laughs> you're not going to be thinking about who the president is. You're not going to be thinking about nothing except Jesus. And are you going with him? Praise the Lord. Hey, listen, who, uh, hey, who the vice president is, is not going to determine who you, where you going. Who's the president is not going to determine your eternity. It's not going to determine your eternity. The celebration of this whole thing is great, but it is not going to determine your eternity. Facebook, Twitter, games on, on phones and Playing all this stuff is not going to determine where you spend eternity. What's going to determine where you spend eternity is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And how you spend eternity is going to determine, will be determined by what you did for the kingdom of God now. Woo. You better hear me because those things are far greater and far more important than whoever the president is in Jesus name. So I was saying a minute ago, and I'm going to go back to that. You know, people are put in positions. They really are, uh, for the kingdom agenda and for the, for the kingdom of God and his agenda. And you know how, you know, because they glorify him. I'm going to just leave that right there. You want to be able to tell how a person is put in a position to, to that by God and in that position by God, they, they, they use that opportunity in that platform to magnify and glorify him. You want to know how they, they glorify him. They say, God did this and not just that God did this. He is a part of, and a foundational aspect of their platform. And they say it. 
They speak it out of their mouth. God did this and not just, you know, that name of Jesus, you see it. It'll pop up somewhere. <laughs> so if you want to know whether a person is really put in a position to be used by God, look for scripture somewhere. Look for the word of God somewhere. It should be somewhere. I'm not saying perfect people. Nobody's perfect. And I'm not trying to fix nothing on either side of this. I'm saying that if a person, Tim Tebow, think of all of the football players that's been drafted and played in the National Football League and all the base, uh, football players that played in college. This boy put John 316 on a blacked out place up on his eyelid for national television to see. Now, I'm not saying other players did not do it and give God glory. They did. But it's clear to be able to tell the difference between a person that's in a position because they believe God did it and they give him glory and, and they don't. It, it, it's kind of clear to see. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So as it relates to that, our job, we got to be careful that we don't get caught up in the cares of this world. I'm going to go back to a scripture because I meant to give it earlier and it was Matthew 6.22. Matthew 6.22. Praise the Lord. And, and this is going to be applicable to what we're talking about. And if you notice, Matthew 6 and 22, notice what it says. Let me know when I'm ready. Yeah, watch this. Notice it says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Now listen to that. I'm going to read 23, but you don't have to put it up there. But if thy eye be evil or, or, or unfocused, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Watch this. I got to keep reading, y'all. God tell me to read the next one too. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other. Boy, that sounds familiar. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. So now this is mammon basically is talking about finances and money and that kind of thing. But but I but I but I want to talk to you. It's it's the world system in general. It's the whole world system. You can't serve the world system and God's system as well. You can't love the world system and love the and love the system of God and the kingdom of God as well. You're gonna put one behind the other. Ooh, I submit to you, y'all, that some folks have lost focus. And because they've lost focus, they have begun to love the world system more than the kingdom system. Which means that they're putting God behind, putting him on the back burner, and they're accepting things and receiving things and come condoning things and endorsing things that are not God because they have bought into this world system when there is a kingdom system that rises above all of this mess. In Jesus' name, let the Spirit of the God, Lord cause you to hear what the Spirit is saying. So we have to realize that we cannot get caught up in so much world stuff that we lose sight of what God is doing because God's system and God's kingdom is moving and the church is being progressive about moving toward where God needs it to be in order for him to come back. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. That's where we're going. That's where we're moving to. That's where God is taking the church and he is not putting the church on the bench waiting for other stuff. He's moving now. Trust me when I tell you this. I know you don't see it. My pastor used to say that just because it don't look like it don't mean we're not winning. The church of God is winning, baby, and it's moving forward. And you can tie it into all of this stuff that's going on in the world if you want to, but I'm telling you right now, the kingdom of God ruleth over all, and the, and the kingdom of God is moving forward. I've said this from the very beginning. I said this before the, the election ever took place, that the church is moving and has already begun to transition. It had nothing to do with the election. It may have had everything to do with it, but I'm telling you right now, it, it was moving before this election. The church of God has been moving since the year 2020 began. 
even in the midst of the per, 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 uh, pandemic, even in the midst of economic plight, even in the midst of racial unrest, even in the midst of all of this junk that's going on, even in the midst of the election and the government, the church has been moving all along. We just don't see the full manifestation of it. But trust me when I tell you, the church is moving. You can either go on into Canaan or you can stay out there in the wilderness. But as for me and my house, we going into Canaan land, baby. We're going to move with God. We got our bags packed and we're ready to go. I think there's a song that starts out like that, but I don't know what it is. But I'm just telling you, uh, uh, we as the church must be about our father's business. And we got to have our eyes open to be able to see. You remember that prayer? Remember the prayer that uh that Paul prayed in Ephesians? Where is that? Can 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 we go to that? Yeah, it's Ephesians uh 1 15. Ephesians 1 15. Let's let's look at that right quick. Ephesians 1 15. And it's 1 15 through a little while. <laughs> Notice it says in Ephesians. One, this is, now, this is Paul, Paul's prayer to the church at Ephesus. This is what he was praying to them. And I'm telling you, it's the same thing. It's a remarkable how the people were in the same condition after everything that had gone on and everything that they've seen, even in biblical days, they're dealing with the same thing we're dealing with. In these season, in this season, watch it says here. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you. This is Paul praying, making mention of you in my prayers. He said, oh, "Man, I'm praying for y'all. Listen, what I'm praying for y'all. Y'all pray for me too. We all need to pray. All of us need to be praying the same thing. That that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of Him. See, right now." We need wisdom from above based on God's knowledge and based on his word, not based on the media, not based on CNN, not based on Fox, not based on Twitter, not based on uh, 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 Facebook, not based on uh, Snapchat, not based on uh, any of that stuff. That stuff is manipulated by the world. And they are leading us around, um, not me, but a, a lot of people are being led around by the nose, by the media. And they are lying and they are manipulating and they are piecing and editing stuff to give an account of what they want you to see. And a lot of us are taking it and running with it. Amen. Let me get back. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge in him. Here it is. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened or opened up. For what? That ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what the exceeding greatness of his power to us would, who believe according to to the working of his mighty power. Now watch this. Notice it says to us what who believe. You know what I believe? I believe there's some us what's who don't believe. Yeah. He said, I'm praying to us what who believe. But there's some us what's, there's some folk in the pack that don't really believe. And we got some folks in the pack that have put their trust in man more than they have their trust in God. The Bible says that it's better to trust in God than to put your faith or trust in man. And it's time for us to put our full trust in our father, which is in heaven. So as it relates to this, he prayed this prayer, man, that we would have our eyes open, the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. And a lot of us are blind right now because we're going through our emotions and we're going through the natural and we're caught up in strife and we're caught up in all of this bickering and battering and posting and all of this stuff and the news and all of this stuff has created confusion. And it's amazing what you can see if you look with your spiritual eyes in the name of Jesus. So I'm praying for every person that's on this, on this service today. I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened and basing it on what the wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, 
not on man, not on anything that's being pumped out and produced by the, t by the TV or by television, but that you're receiving your wisdom and knowledge based on the word of God and what thus say the Lord, not what thus says CNN, not what thus says Fox, not what ABC, NBC, CBS, or any other affiliate says, but that you receive your guidance and you receive your direction and you receive your identity from the word of God, which is the intent of God from the very beginning in Jesus name. Amen. Uh, amen. So, so, uh, should I go on with that? Lord, should I go on? No, that's, that's the point I wanted to make. So I'm going to go back to where I was cause I'm running out of time. Um, um, Mark 4, 19 says, and the cares of this world and deceitfulness, riches and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word and it become unfruitful. So, so, so watch this. Remember that these are the latter days. See, one of the critical things that we have to accept and realize is that, uh, we're coming to the latter that we are in the latter days and we're coming to the return of Jesus. And I know people say that all the time. You've heard that all the time, but no, we really are. <laughs> We really are coming to the end days, the end times. So, um, as a matter of fact, that's something probably we'll get into. We'll start talking about in the 2021 is, is discussing the, the end time season and understanding revelations a little better and, and understanding where we are as it relates to the end season and where we should be in doing, uh, look at, uh, let, let, remember that these are the latter days. Look at Micah chapter four, verse one. Micah chapter four, verse one. So, so we got to be about our father's business. Our kids, I, you know, my kids, they in here, they listening. Um, they got to start saying something by God and stop sitting back and letting people say stuff and do stuff and cuss and do all this kind of junk. And, 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 you know, if people feel comfortable doing that around you, it's cause they don't feel like you got God's presence on you. On your, uh, wherever you go and you're in places and folks is just cussing and just this, that, and the other, and talking trash and telling dirty jokes and nasty and all this kind of stuff. And, and you just standing there, it's because they don't see the word. They don't, they don't see God's presence on you. That's, we should be the light. That should be the light of God shining on the inside of us in Jesus name. Micah 4, 1 says, but in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it. Listen to this statement I got from God. He said this mountain, the mountain of God's house is higher than the hills of the world. The mountain of God's house is higher than the hills of the world. Nothing is greater than the mountain of God's house in its rightful position. So now if the, if the God's house is not in its rightful position, it just blends into the hills of everything else that's going on. But when the, when the mount, when God's house sits in the mountain, which it's supposed to be in, it rises above all the hills and the peaks and valleys of the world. So we should be allowing the kingdom of God's house to rise to its rightful position in the mountains of this world and be on top. Amen. It is the season for people. Watch this to flow into the church onto the mountain, but not in the valley. Nobody going to be flowing into the church. If the church is in the valley, nobody going to be flowing in the church. If the church is just a part of the hills, that's already around just another little hill here, another little hill there. Well, there's a church. It's on a hill. There's this going on. It's on a hill. There's that. It's on. No, 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 no. This scripture says the, the church should be on the mountain above the hills. And that's what positions us to be prepared for the people, for the influx of the body of Christ in these last days. Notice we should be exalting the church. Somebody say, amen. We should be exalting the church. We should be exalting the church to the top of the mountains. It should be in its rightful place on the mountaintop. Ta! Martin Luther King said this, I've been to the mountaintop. He said, and I looked over and I've seen the promised land. You can't see it when you're on the hill, baby. You can't see it unless you get up on the mountaintop. Woo! So God wants us to see some things that he has for us. He wants to show us 
what he has done for us. He wants us to be able to visualize and see what he has made available for us, but we can't see it on the hills and in the valleys. We can only see it when we are at the top of the mountain. So I just encourage you today, push God up to the top of the mountain where he belongs. Let's get the church up to the top of the mountain where it belongs. We should be exalting the church, exalting God in this season, speaking highly of God. We ain't talking about this folk, these folks that's, that's, that's in these electoral positions. That's cool. That's great. That's fine. But God, oh, but God, he doing something special. He's making some things happen. And we should be confessing that in our lives anyway. We should be calling those things that be not as though they were. And those things that we confess out of our mouth that align with the word of God, those things manifest. The world got us speaking the, the world stuff, and that's what's manifesting around us because we're talking about the world too much. We have submitted ourselves to CNN too much, to a fox too much, and we're making our confessions based on what the world tells us to say. And remember, this is a word-based system, and we should be speaking the word of God to cause those things to manifest in our lives. Amen. Faith is the substance of things what? Hope for the evidence of things not seen. We ain't hoping for a bunch of junk that's going on around here. That's not our hope. Hope thou in God? The question asked. We're hoping in God. We're hoping in the kingdom. We're hoping in the spirit of God coming and manifesting itself in our lives. And that's where we should be. And that's what should be going on right now. I don't care who wins. In Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass when? In the last days. Where are we? In the last days. Say, God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. We have the advantage of God's spirit, y'all. That's our advantage, which causes us to see things and to dream and visualize things beyond the natural. That's our kingdom advantage. He said, in the last days, I'm pouring out my spirit. You know what I believe? I believe his spirit is being poured out right now. Well, I don't see it. It don't look like it. Well, eyes have not seen. He have not heard. Neither had it entered into the heart of man the things that God has for them that love him. So you might not see it with your natural eyes. That's the problem. We're looking with our natural eyes and trying to see stuff when we should have our eyes of understanding enlightened that we may see and know what is the hope of his calling in the saints. In the saints. Boy, I hope you got that right there. Because that was God. For us to understand that we got to look past this natural stuff and look over into the spirit realm. Amen. So we have the advantage of God's spirit who causes us to see visions and dreams beyond the natural. So I'm praying this, Father, I thank you that you're giving us dreams and you're giving us visions and helping us to understand what the next steps are for us. There's somebody right now that's watching this and you don't know what to do next and your money ain't right and it's running out and you don't have any idea how God's going to do it, but he's going to do it if you trust and believe in him. Yeah, that may be a stimulus. That's great. That's fine. But I'm looking for a spiritual s stimulus package. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking and receiving the spiritual stimulus and it don't stop and nobody has to vote it in because God decides he want to do it. I get a stimulus from God. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. I'm a sower. I trust and believe in God. My stimulus packages don't never stop. Woo! Hallelujah. I done got a little carried away. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Isaiah two and two. I hope y'all getting something from this. <laughs> and it shall come to pass when in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. I already said that. And it shall be exalted where above the hills. We already talked about that. It was the same thing in Micah four, but watch this. But then it talked about up there in Micah four, it talked about and, and, and people shall flow into it. But guess what? Here it says, for all nations are to come to God. See, see, we got to get to the place we need to be in, y'all, so the church can be seen for all over the world. So nations can flow into it. 
Nations can come to God. See, we're holding this thing up because we need to get in our place and we need to make sure that the church is elevated to its proper position. Now, God can, can, can tell us where to go, but we still got to go there ourselves. And it's our job to motivate, exalt the church, to lift the church to its normal, to its proper place, to put it on the pinnacle at the top. The church is greater than the government of the United States. The church is greater than the government of all the world systems. The church is greater. See, that's exalting it. See, that's putting it in that. That's, see, that's, a, that's mountain talk. The church is greater than whoever the president of the United States is. The church is greater than whoever the emperors are, or whoever the, uh, 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 whatever they are in every other place. Whoever the king is in England or whoever the um, monarch is and all this stuff. The kingdom of God is greater. That is mountain talk. And that's what we should be having. We should be talking mountain stuff. And the only way you talk mountain is to put God ahead of everything and everybody in the name of Jesus. So we must elevate and respond to God's call on our lives and set ourselves toward the kingdom agenda. I said, set ourselves toward the kingdom of agenda. Look at Colossians three, one through three. If Christ then be risen, seek those things, what? Which are above, above what? Above the world, above what? Above the election. I didn't say not participate. You should participate and you should have participated. And if you did, you either on one side or the other, one winning side or the losing side. It's just, that's, the, that's the world stuff. But that's not where your affections are. See, if your affections are on the winner or the loser, then you, 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 you feel good. You feel, you feel, Ooh, I just feel so good. Oh, oh, I feel so good now. I feel good now. You should have felt good anyway. Jesus was Lord on the other side of this. Jesus was Lord. Yeah, Jesus. Remember him? The guy that's coming back to all eternity, loves us, paid the price on us, was on the cross, died for us, went to heaven, went to hell, came back up, raised up, went to heaven. Yeah, you don't feel good about that? Now you feel good? N n now everything is going to be wonderful? Now? You know what that means? That means that is more your sanctuary than Jesus. I don't get mad at him. Don't shout me down. I'm just calling to attention what Jesus wants you to know. You know, God say, I'm a jealous God now. So you running around here, you feel great now. Everything is good. The old demon is out of the position. And now things are going to be so right. No, no, they're going to be right because Jesus, not because of anybody, not because of a man. Okay, I'll stop. But I'm just telling you. We got to check our, we got to check our affiliation. Who is really Lord in your life? Who is really God in your life? Ooh, I'll start to say something I can't say. <laughs> Ooh, we, I want to say something. <laughs> I want to say something. Ooh, let me ask him. Can I say that? Ooh. Okay, I'll say it this way. If the glorification of what's taking place is what a person's affiliation is, and your connection to that affiliation makes things so wonderful, and not because they are Christians and love God and Jesus, you got a problem. And if you don't understand what that means, I, that's, how, that's what he allowed me to say. Instead of going right in, if the person's affiliation it's what really gives you pride and really magnifies the positions of the person because they're affiliated with something you're affiliated with. And you're not doing that because they're affiliated with Jesus and they're affiliated with God. You need to check your whole card. That's all I'm going to say. It says, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. 
for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Watch this. Remember, we are the carriers of the truth. We are the carriers. So you got to set your affections on things above. The most important thing and the most valuable thing is our membership in the body of Christ. Yeah, it's our membership in the body. Remember that? Our membership in the body of Christ. It is not winning an argument over policies and procedures and foundations. It is giving God's perspective on everything. God's perspective on everything. I, I pray I haven't offended anybody. But if I have, I apologize. But all I'm telling you is the truth. The Bible says, let God be true and let every man be a lie. The truth rules and reigns in every arena. And I'm going to close with this. Remember, we are the carriers of the truth. That's our job, man. Our job is not to get affiliated with all this other stuff. And everybody got a preference. Don't get me wrong. I have a preference. But my preference is not above God and the kingdom of God. Watch this. 1 Timothy 3.15 says, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how to thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. Watch this. The pillar and the ground of the truth. That's us. And with everything that's going on, man, I, I, I just, I pray for a, a, a true resolution to this stuff that's going on with our uh, government system. But I'm praying even more so that we all engage in what we're called to do and where we're called to go and what we're called to be. Not taking away from anything or anybody, but really putting the church of God on the mountaintop. And all these hills and valleys subjugate themselves to the kingdom of God. So I, I trust and believe that you got something from this message today. If this is your first time and you've never received Jesus as Lord of your life, then I want to encourage you today to receive Jesus. God loves you so much and he paid a price for you that you could not pay for yourself. So if you're on here today and you've never given your life to Christ, I cannot stress to you more how vitally important it is for you to give your life to Christ. Jesus is coming back soon. No doubt about it. Now, soon could be four years from now. Soon could be, but I wouldn't gamble on it if I were you. Because if he comes back and you have not declared him as Lord of your life and you have not received his sacrifice for your life and for your sins, then you, you die eternally lost. There's no transition of changing on the other side of this life. So don't gamble with your eternity. Just say this prayer after me. Father, I repent. I recognize that you died on the cross for my sins and paid a price for me I could not pay. I believe that you died for me. I call on you now to be Lord of my life. I call on you to come into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for being my Savior. And I give you all the glory and praise for being my Lord in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. Now, you should go and find you a good church, get baptized, and celebrate outwardly what just took place inwardly. We just believe and declare that, that you have a place to do that. If you don't, let us know and we'll help you find a place to get baptized. And I'll do it. I'll do it here in Birmingham if, if you need me in Birmingham or wherever it is. I'll make arrangements and we can, we can make that happen. Uh, but whatever you do, make sure that you make that declaration and act on that. Then find your good home church, good church where you're going to be taught the word of God. Secondly, if you're here today and you have asked Jesus to be Lord, but you've separated yourself from God, you've allowed other things to be more important than God, and you've allowed other things to take precedence in your life, and you're making your decisions now based on other stuff and not on the Word of God, then you need to repent. And you can pray this prayer after me. Father, I repent. I recognize I've gone the wrong way. I've made wrong decisions. I separated myself from you. 
And Father, I ask that you uh, forgive me for making that decision. And, and, and thank you so much for coming back and getting me back connected in our intimate relationship. And I love you for it in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, you just got reconnected in your intimate walk with God. Not because he moved, but because you moved. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And do the same thing about finding your local church home. If you're not learning where you are, go somewhere where you can learn. And I just declare in Jesus' name that you'll make that decision and things take off from here. And the Holy Spirit, show them what to do. If you don't have a church home, we just believe that this Living Word Church is a great church now. Not a perfect church, but we believe that we are striving to be. And that we're working and doing everything that God is calling us to do. Remember I said this, and I believe it, that the church of God is moving forward regardless of what anybody is seeing or anything that's going on. The kingdom of God is, is marching forward toward the agenda of being prepared for Jesus to come back. And he's not waiting for anybody or anything to do that. We have an opportunity now. We hear, hear today uh, his voice and the voice of a stranger don't follow. You hear his voice, you follow and he's telling you, let's keep walking. Let's keep walking toward the kingdom agenda. And if you've never been filled with the Spirit, the Bible then speaking with new tongues, that's for every born-again believer. Man, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. I wouldn't, wouldn't even attempt to try knowing what I know about being able to pray in the Spirit. He's given you supernatural opportunity and understanding. And it's to intercede and pray in a supernatural way so nothing and the enemy can't interfere with it. He's given you the opportunity to pray in the Spirit for supernatural praise and worship. And the Bible says... You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come up on you. Not in you because it came in you during salvation, but on you for empowerment, for living and doing and serving in a supernatural way. Father, I thank you so much for that now. And if you're interested, just call us, let us know, send us a message, send us by Facebook or by our, uh, by our, our website. And boy, we'd be glad to get you any information you need. Listen, God loves you, y'all. I'm so excited. Again, I I pray I didn't offend anybody in what I said today, but everything I said was straight from scriptures. And I want you to know that God loves you and he's really trying to get our attention right now to help us to be prepared for what is about to take place in the world through the body of Christ. We are active members of the body of Christ and we can't lose sight of that. God loves you so much and we love you too. So as we always do, we'll close out like this. Remember, the word of God is life. The word of God is alive. And this word of God is living in you. You be blessed and go have a wonderful day in Jesus name. Amen.